Hey there everyone, uh, another progress update video for version 3.0 of the Community Theme Creator. It's not going to be a, a long video, but I do have a couple of things to show you. Um, one of which I wasn't anticipating um, to complete until this weekend, but here we are. So let's get into it. Uh, so I did mention, um, in the last video that I was incorporating the theme specific options. So if I take this theme here and just click edit and we have our theme specific options here, this is all now complete. Okay. Um, so if I were to enable this, for example, if you're familiar with this um, series of options within Big Box, then you'll be familiar with um, how this works. Okay, so whenever you see an asterisk on the left-hand side here, it, it, it's essentially saying you've enabled um, an override on this particular um, parameter or property or whatever. Okay. It, it's basically deviated from the default. Okay. So, and again, with views, I've got this set up. I mean, my theme is still in development, so I really don't have a great deal of views, but I have told it that, um, or at least the default anyway, um, is that with the platform view, it will go to text list. For the games list view, it will go to text list. Um, I mean, if I were to pick different views here. Again, you would see the asterisk to say, hey, you've deviated from the default. Okay. Um, and I definitely needed these ones on um, in order to make the filter text um, appear. Okay. So this is now complete. So I think you'll find this very useful, especially if you want to use it just as an entry point you want to specify exactly which platform view the user will see first, which games view the user will see first. It's kind of cool. Anyway, um, that's it. Uh, so let's go to the uh, CTC mega theme. And let me just make it full screen. Um, so I've changed up a couple of things. It's still a work in progress, all right? So... I move like the filter criteria from up here into its own dedicated kind of panel here. And um, it's it's really kind of conditioned uh, whether it displays that whole panel or not. And we'll get into that. But what's more important is this area over here. OK, so if I go to, uh, let's say, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, and actually, before I do that, uh, let me just edit the view so it doesn't kick off these new animations. All right. So uh, details panel is our animations. I'm going to delete these. I'm going to re-add them anyway. Let me just refresh my memory here. Okay. Memory refreshed. All right. So let's just save this view. All right. Um, so if I pick a game that I know has no metadata at all. Uh, at, uh, was it Atomico? It was one of these. Yeah, Atomico. It's got no metadata. All right. So... If this panel has no metadata to display at all, I mean, nothing, all right? And I don't want to show fallback icons. I know I don't have icons at the moment, but I will have icons. Um, if there are no, and I don't plan to have fallback icons, so if I have no icons being displayed and there's no notes to be displayed, why even display the panel, all right? I want to get it out of there. Now, Obviously, I could use visibility conditioning and I could just make it just disappear. But how about if I want it 
animated and I want to say if I don't have any information get it out of there you know so the way we're going to do that is first of all see this divider line here okay I'm going to use the divider line as the as the decision maker to say whether or not um, the panel goes or 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 appears on screen. Okay, so this will ultimately have all the conditioning on it to say if the notes contain nothing and this icon has nothing or this metadata has nothing and this metadata has nothing. So it will be a whole series of and, 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 no value, and no value, and no value, and so on and so forth, right? If that condition is true, then it will essentially, essentially collapse that divider line, okay? Um, so the divider line will be in two states. It'll either be visible or collapsed, all right? And we'll use that to trigger an animation, okay, of this panel. Um, so we'll go to the details panel, all right, and we'll go down to animations, say new, I'm going to say immediately, so I'm going to add this back in, I want to move it, I want to move it uh, off screen bottom, off screen bottom, basically just as soon as this view loads, you won't even see it, it's going to be off screen, all right. Now, here's the new bit. Uh, this was just added. So new. It's a custom condition. So this is new condition. And I'm going to say when panel details panel divider visibility is visible. When that condition is true execute this series of animations. In this case, I've only got one, or I'm only planning on one. And we want to move it from current location to define location, and it's going to take 0.5, all right? And just to be doubly sure, what did I say? If the divider panel line is visible. So basically, I want to make the whole panel visible. So move it from the bottom of the screen to its defined location here, all right? And we'll go in, I'm gonna copy this line. We're still using a move, and I'm gonna move it from current location to off-screen bottom, and I want it to be a little bit snappier, 0.25, but this time, I only want to do that if the divider line is collapsed. All right, if it's collapsed, get that panel off screen. All right, so I'll save it. And now we'll go to Atomico and the panel disappears. Click on a game that has data, comes back, all right. So this is brand new um, and, you know, you can do whatever you want. I mean, it all depends on what animations you want to put together. That's nothing new, but now you can really home in on very specific scenarios um, of when you want to trigger those animations, which is critical. Um, now, the cool thing is that um, I'm pretty much using what I had before. Um, I just incorporated a new triggering system um, with the conditions that I typically build for visibility and uh, colors and all that kind of stuff. So I already had all this stuff in place. I just needed to link them together. So, um, so it's very familiar, which is good. Um, now the next thing, what I have planned for this weekend is, uh, to incorporate animations, which are not currently available in the wheel item, uh, designer. Okay. So I'm going to open that up. So animation, um, is available and 
with that now you can specify custom conditioning for those animations so for example if the wheel item is now selected maybe you want to fade out something and fade something in or maybe you want to show a video or whatever you want to do okay um like i said you don't have that capability today but now that i've got this uh um uh, new animation triggering system uh, in play I plan to use it uh, within the wheel item so fingers crossed I can actually do that um, I see but I see no reason why I can't all right uh, so we'll see how that goes this weekend um, but essentially that is pretty much it um, and I've got these uh, animation settings for set up for the platform view, the wall view, and all that kind of good stuff. So what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and publish the theme real quick. And I'll run it through Big Box. And I'm actually running the latest uh, beta version of, of Big Box, which I think was dropped yesterday. All right, so I haven't done anything out of the ordinary. Um, it was running these themes just fine. So let's run Big Box. <clears throat> okay, so again, the same conditioning is true um, even in the platform view. So when I scroll down to Steam, for example, there was no metadata, so we got that panel out of there. As soon as I go onto a, a platform that has metadata, panel pops back in. All right. Um, wall view, let's see, text list. Um, what was that game? Atomico? I'm just trying to find something that I know does not have. Um, metadata. Yeah, there you go. All right. So it works just fine. Now, with the um, filter... Uh, section. Um, I, I can't show you the mouse pointer, but um, above the text list wheel. Okay. So for example, if I go in and mm, let's say view publishers and do Activision. So Activision shows in the little panel there all right and then if i select this game crackpots crackpots shows in the title there all right so that was the logic behind it i i didn't really want it in the 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 banner banner portion um i really wanted it kind of associated with the with the list or the wheel uh the selection panel i should say all right so Again, it's still a work in progress. I've still got some graphical tweaks to make to it, but you know, that was my first pass. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really all I, I had to show you, um, this time around. I told you it wasn't going to be very long. Um, yeah, it was, it was really just the, um, the, the linking of, uh, conditioning, um, to the animation, uh, editor. Uh, that that really was it. That that was the trick, and it was something that I've been mulling over for for a few months actually. Um, so, uh, like I said, I managed to get it done at like two o'clock this morning. Um, so uh, yeah, I've got a ton of testing to do still, and like I said, I've I want to incorporate into the the wheel item designer uh, this weekend. So that's yet another layer that I have to go to. Um, so again, that's that's all going to be very interesting to see how all this kind of 
uh, ties together. But um, yeah, so far, so good. It's it's doing what it's intended to do. Um, uh, so yeah, it will prov provide a hell of a lot of flexibility. Um, all right. So um, I won't be doing a video this weekend. This is pretty much uh, pretty much it. Um, we'll see how it goes this weekend with development. Um, and uh, the following weekend, I'll hopefully have an update for you because I'm going to have a considerable amount of testing to do. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll uh, catch you in the next video in about a week or so. All right. Take care, everyone.